Well, let's let's pray also for our next week. This is Palm Sunday. Next week is is going to be Easter. The Saturday next Saturday is our our big community event that we had 300 people last year. So we're we're hoping for good weather. We're praying for that. So um, it would remember what happened Saturday. <laughs> Snowed. Um, no, no, not last year. But it snowed Saturday, so we're we we're good. Hopefully next week. Bring me to fight a little more. Joyce mentioned. Joyce, you mentioned Wednesday night prayer meeting about a young man in the hospital, terminal. Is there any more word on him? No. He's just. Um, they're keeping him sedated. Cause that's all I know. All right. Well, let's. Let's pray. Thank you all for everybody coming today. It's nice to have a good crowd. His name is John. Father, this morning uh, we were thankful and blessed that we get to come together and, and have a good fellowship like this and learning. And We're having a little struggle trying to get through this lesson here, but I guess that's good. We don't have any rules stating that we have to get to a certain place. This morning we lift up all these needs, uh, our prayers, and we keep praying for uh, our country, uh, the leadership of it, Lord, in all levels of leadership, and for other churches and the churches and missionaries all around the world. We pray for all of those leaders and the, the churches and our neighboring churches. Uh, we pray for those that need a healing touch today. We pray for Matt for continued healing, for Audrey and Emily, and Dan this morning not feeling well and we pray for Deb over here for strength and courage and doing what she's doing uh, to change jobs so that actually she can be home more and be here at church more often and so that's a good move we pray that you'll give her strength and courage to do everything there and we know when we go through a life change such as a job or moving or something like that it's always a, a, a quite a bit of detail that needs to be worked out but uh, help her to be patient, and Lord, uh, it'll be successful. We pray for Joyce's prayers this morning for others, and as we think of everyone around the table today, we all have different issues, and we, uh, those that uh, in our families and extended families and, and friends and neighbors that we know, uh, we should be concerned and have the desire to help them find Jesus Christ in their heart. And, in a world that just seems to be spiraling out of control and we just pray that they would do that make those decisions and help us to be just a little part of it lord and the growing along with the other churches lord today in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. well enjoy yeah well our our lesson that, that, that we had been got so? started on we didn't get very far but at, at our age do you think uh, the, the question was, is, are we supposed to set goals in our life? Is that, we, we talked about having different goals, and of course if you go back to when we went all the way back when we were in high school and talked about uh, thinking about goals for our life, you know, and, and, and usually uh, we're thinking about what we're going to do. Are we going to get married? Do we like somebody? Uh, what What do we want to do? Do we want to go to college? What type of, what kind of vocation are we thinking about doing? So most of us have already come through that part, um, but it doesn't matter what age we are. I don't think that we should ever just okay, well, I'm 25 now. I don't need to make any more goals. <laughs> you know, I think, I think that your life is kind of full of goals all the way up through it. And should we, did we ever clarify? Is it, what about somebody who says, well, I don't want to set any goals because I probably can't make them, so I'm just going to take each day at a time and I'm not going to say, I'm not going to tell anybody that I'm going to do anything. Uh, well, that that doesn't that's not very good. And, and what they said in here was, I remember saying that, as the saying goes, aiming at nothing, uh, we, you'll hit it every time. Yeah. You'll be successful <laughs> at your goal if, we, if you don't have any. So I think that I think for the most part that we all should have short-term goals. We should have long-term goals, medium 
length goals, you know, I'm going to accomplish this in my life over the next two years, or I'm going to, I'm going to start doing this. And, and what is important about this is that we speak about our spiritual life too. That connect. That's that's huge. If if we were to say, oh, my life's all about my life. I don't care about the spiritual thing. You you got bad thinking there. Uh, we need to really consider that. Yeah. We don't at our age don't know how long our life is going to be if we have a long-term goal. But everybody here that's sitting around this table probably has one general thought. We want to do what God would have us do and that we would listen to his call. And that's what we're doing, listening for his next call, whatever that might yeah. be. At, at, at any age, and you said something that, you know, as we get older we don't really know how many years we got. We don't know that when we're 16. That's true. Right. That's true. Either. So, I said a goal this morning on the way to church. I told Guy I was going to lose weight, so I did this shirt so I don't fit me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call. <laughs> well, there, there's a lot of people that do um, have goals for, for uh, their body and, you know, how... How, weight, how much you really want to weigh and different things like that. That's something that's quite prevalent out there. And so, do we agree that we need to have short and long term <coughs> dreams, goals, uh, things to look forward to, set them, and see if we can do our best to keep them? Yes. yes. You know, it, it, it takes a few things uh, as we look here. And the question that we, we got down to, got through the first paragraph, and it was, we started off by talking about somebody that went in a restaurant, and they were talking to the waitress in there. And she said, well, I'm only working here because I need the money. I want to go to college and, and get, I want to be a nurse. And so she had a good goal for that, and I know people that, are, that have that goal, and so they're working towards it. Um, so that's kind of a, an example that they gave us. Question is, what about you? What are some goals that you hope to accomplish in your life? God has given each person, did you know that, that God has given each person specific goals to accomplish? But as mentioned earlier, for most it can be difficult uh, to know and accomplish them. Um, I think we, here's where knowing can, can we live our life and just leave God out? No. You can, but you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, we've all probably at some time in our life thought, you know, I'm a teenager, I'm, I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and i got all these huge things that I'm going to do, mm. and we forgot God altogether. We, we just kind of thought, well, this is what I'm doing right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'll, I'll probably pray and see what God wants me to do. That kind of attitude right there, you will find out in your life as you, as you get a little older and wiser and realize that you need the Lord in your life. Let's talk about uh, one thing. This is why we can't get done with this because there's, it's so complicated. Okay. Have you guys all gotten to the point in your life sometime when you, real, you you thought you had the world by the tail? You know, you had a boyfriend, you had a girlfriend, you had everything going, you had kids on the way, and you had things. I'm doing pretty good, ain't I? You know, I, I'm doing all right, but we, we didn't have the main thing. When did you discover that, and how did you discover that? I think that depends on your background. If your parents were Christians and... You were sharing, the kid, uh, your mom and dad were sharing with you the good news, whereas somebody that has absolutely no background, that's a different story. They could, I mean, they, blank. yeah, they, that kind of person that doesn't have a uh, background or any connection to the church probably could miss the whole thing. Yes. You know, very easily. Uh, but I think everybody is going to get to be the age. Uh, it, you might be the person that says, "What, what is it with all the? What are these churches? What, what's church? You know." So if you have any wisdom at all, you might 
you might be asking your parents or whoever you talk to, uh, what is what's the churches for? God, who's who's got who's it that there's a God? You know, you you hear, you don't just completely blow right on by that stuff. Even if you live in downtown Flint, I mean that that's a pretty good example of downtown Flint or downtown somewhere or even out in the country and you didn't have a connection anywhere no no uh, connection with grandma she never went to church a lot of us would say well my grandma went to church and I you know so I asked and found out somewhere we find out everybody at least in this country um, that there that there's a God and uh, a lot of different ways of worship. I'm sorry I keep talking, but yesterday he put something on the group. Some girl that works at his work um, writes every day. Jeff, tell the story. You put a girl on the roof? <laughs> <laughs> on the group. The was a, I was at work, okay. and uh, we had a girl there that she, all she does is make fresh orange juice. And all day long she just sits there and scribbles notes. But one day I asked her, you know, um, if she was studying for school. She's like, no. Okay. So it was a week or so, she was scribbling again. And she does it every day, all day long. So about a week or so, I'm like, well, you know, are you writing poetry or, you know, writing music or something? She's like, no. Okay. Just scribbling. Yeah. So yesterday I asked her, I said, so what do you write down on all these pieces of paper? She said, notes to God. Oh, I think younger. So if, if that's true, then she was expressing her thoughts to the Lord, yeah. if, if that was her, her, her inner heart. Yeah. 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 Okay, so... That's a good thing. I think so, too. Yeah, it could be. So, talking to God. Is, yes. Yeah, that would be kind of talking to God right now. How can she get away with that and still work? <laughs> when she expresses the orange juice, she just has to sit there and pour it in the jar. <laughs> For most of us, when we're, when we're growing up and decide to come to the Lord, if it was influenced by our family or where we lived and, and they were Christians, I think that, that we would be probably have gone to church, which most of us have done. Um, what was it, though, in your life that caused you to seek a relationship with Christ? You know, we'll, we'll just be going along and we're born into this world as sinners. And what is it? Is it some kind of event in our life, some kind of emotional event, a physical event? What would cause us what to you, turn to God? What, what you said earlier. To me, God spoke to me. That presence, you know, nudging me. And, and when, you realized that He was calling. I knew you. that He was there and talking to you. Yeah. What? What do you think? Rusty's family is neighbors to us, and his younger sister is my age. Her name's Debbie, and um, we were best friends. And they kept inviting me to church and stuff. And finally, about 14, I went. My family didn't go to church. Um, I guess my mother went when I was young, but like before five years old. But then when she married my stepdad, she never, they never went to church. And I went to church with her, and I was saved. But I didn't really know what it meant because I'd never really been around it. So the only thing I knew was I loved his family. Mm -hmm. His dad, I thought, was the greatest man on earth. Still do. <laughs> yeah, let's okay. clarify that. <laughs> but he was just a sweetheart, and he just showed God's love all the time to anybody, to everybody. He would take his wife shopping, and she didn't drive, and he would just sit out in the truck and read his Bible very patiently. So you could see a difference, and you could see his Christian walk. Right, and that's what that got me to do. And then the following Sunday after I was saved, um, his mother told my mother, and they went to church, and my, both my parents were saved. And then they started at church, and I was very lucky to have a youth group that us girls would get together and have Bible studies. That's a great story. That's a great story. A wonderful story. But other people seeing your light, that, that's what showed me. Well, you see how important it is for Christians then 
to be faithful uh, all the time, even when we don't know. We could just be walking by or just sitting there in the truck reading the Bible, and that influence has made a difference in somebody's life. Three people that we know of, and much more, and it just continues to grow. Um, I think that there's, I, I know there was probably health issues that come into play. Sometimes that, the, the Lord uses whatever He needs to use sometimes to get our attention. You know, we might be just rolling along, and we might be a nice person and everything, and all of a sudden, we can't handle what's hit coming our way, and so we start to, you, you hear people all the time on the news and they say, well, you know, I'm not a believer, but I was praying that day, you know, so when it comes down to it, their situation sometimes puts them in a place where they need to turn to God, and we see that all through the Bible, the people that turn to God in, in tough situations, so... These parent, parents that are saying, I don't know what made him do that, killed somebody or took his life. We have so many more people that are doing that, kids taking their lives. And the parents stand there and say, I just don't know what, they don't know God. They haven't had any, you know, connection. Absolutely. And it's always something else. They, they have, uh, without God, you, when you think about it, you don't really have any hope for the future, right. for eternity. We're, people that don't believe in God would say, well, you know, I might live to be 80, but after that, there's nothing. There's no hope. And, and as Christians, you know God, you know that, did you know that we never, a Christian never really dies? Right. <laughs> you're you're just gonna live for eternity starting now if you know Jesus Christ. My story. My parents. I, there was no religion. I didn't grow up well until like third grade. Um, my dad's atheist, and I moved in with my dad in third grade, and he didn't want to send me to Flint public schools, so he sent me to Holy Redeemer. Um, be an atheist, and he's like, just don't bring any of it home. I, don't, I just don't want to know what you're learning. Right? <laughs> it's okay for you, but not right, right. So confusing for a kid, you know. To and so I went from third grade to twelve. I went to Powers and and learned Catholic, mm -hmm. which didn't sit right with me. But I at least was introduced mm -hmm. to Jesus and and. Uh, <coughs> and felt I believed in Jesus. And I don't think I would have had that had he not done that, which is Jesus working even through people that don't believe in God, Absolutely. right? Because he got me. And then after high school, because I just didn't really catch on, it just wasn't, something didn't feel right. And I kind of went my own way, didn't go to church, you know, until I was had kids. I was 33, I think. And I started questioning Jesus again. Like, is Jesus real? And that's when I started questioning Jesus, all of a sudden, feelings started coming back. And I see a church. I started like, you know what? I want to take my kids to, um, what was it? VBS. Mm -hmm. You know, I started sending my kids to these VBSs. And then the one VBS I came into that church, and they were so welcoming, and they remembered my name, and they and it just something told me I needed to to continue this. And I went to, and I was baptized at that church, and I was 33 before I was baptized. And I just want to say that the communities, there was BBS that got me into that and got my, you know, so it's also the community outreach. Yeah. Yeah. that God works with that also helps get yeah. talk yeah. to you because yeah. it talked to me yeah. that too. sometimes it's it's things that we don't really focus on and make a huge importance out of that that's the smaller things mm -hmm. and that that's great that's a great story and, and, and it's God too 
you know, he talks to you even if you're not ready to listen, you know, and, yeah. and, and you talk he'll keep father. pushing you. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, yeah. and if, you, if you ask him into your heart, you know for a fact that the Holy Spirit lives in you, and so he's pretty close, and he can speak to you anytime, anywhere, and you know, that little small voice that is speaking is him. I got one thing to say. I know you want to go on with your lesson. But <laughs> this has been with me since Tuesday night. I thought I thought I was supposed to say it on Wednesday, but it wasn't because I wasn't here. And then this morning, just different things that are being said leads up to this that's been with me. Like you were talking about, you know, different influences. And then you are saying people come to you know, come to the Lord in different situations, whether you need help and all that. Well, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I think, like you've said it before, and people have said it here, that there's something special about this church and the people in it. I think God works through through people to project out what He wants. Right. And I just want to say from a personal standpoint, People in this church have—I mean, I know my problems are smaller than some, smaller than other people. But to me, I've been through a lot mm -hmm. lately and stuff. But the people in this church has projected out to me how much they care and how much—and it's true feelings that people have. Like I've gone to different churches in the past that it's—it's it's a different thing. They act like they care, but you know. It's just a show for the people there in front of the church. But, so just thank to everybody here how much um, I can tell that God actually projects through people here at this church. I think this little church has it's, it's got a lot of growth potential that's going places. Praise God. Thank you. And it's, it's always encouraging. Uh, no matter who we are, if we're just if we're people that go there for the pastor or whatever, to hear things like that, that you're making a difference. You are making a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when when Guy and Debbie came, and, and we were blessed as a church to have them here and watch God at work and their lives changing and the personalities change. And, and you could say, I know God is still on the throne. He still changes people's lives. He still heals. He gives. I, this church has experienced in the last couple of years, especially, more miracles, I think, outright in our face than, than I've ever seen. You know, we have a lot going on in this world, but we've asked for things right at the altar and before the service was over, the prayers were answered. Uh, we've got babies coming to the church now. We ask that in prayer that the Lord would send younger people to our church with babies. You know, yep. they just come right in. Doris tried to have a baby. <laughs> 40, 50 years ago. <laughs> and I got them. <laughs> Cindy was in grave condition when yeah. she first started praying for her. And this was years ago. And we're still praying for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, what a year By ago. the prayers that went up almost eight, ten years ago, yeah. um, you would have thought, she's not going to make it through the week. I didn't think she and was. so God has kept her and sustained her and given her strength and courage. Can you imagine the things that she's gone through, the sicknesses that she's felt and everything all this time? And she still has faith in yeah. it. It's just a miracle. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives us encouragement because we, we didn't just pray and things didn't happen. We prayed and they did happen. Yeah. And so we're able to put that in here and say, yeah, you know, we've got a connection. So we need to keep doing even in these days that they're trying to shut us down from Facebook and, you know, that's the devil. The devil yes. does not like a true church. Yes. 
some of the some of the churches that are just going all over the place. You wonder how do they do that, you know? But maybe it's maybe the devil's not even bothering with them. Maybe they just don't. I, I can't tell you. And I don't want to run other churches down. But yes. Well, don't you think that that might be part of um, them transitioning people into this, you know, one world religion? They're trying there's to take all kinds away of, all the, the good religion. And absolutely, and there's all kinds of agendas, and, and we did that big, huge study on the end times, and that is what the Antichrist and that type of stuff, that's where they're pushing us to. I don't think it's going to be that long before the, the, the church is going to lose its tax exemption. We're already getting got rumors of that going around because of all the different people that are say, well, I'm a non-profit, I, I believe in the lawnmower over here is my God, so, you know, so now, so now I'm, I, I should be tax exempt. It's the abuse of it, just like everything else that is going to ruin it for the good stuff. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Back to the lesson, I, I'd just like to say that um, I am so grateful for uh, my Christian upbringing, a Your Christian, Christian faithful family yes. that gave me constant exposure to God. And um, the, through the preaching, good gospel music, uh, evangelistic services, um, all of that gave me exposure. If I had not been born into a family like that, I don't know where I'd be because I'm pretty much a skeptical type person, yeah. and I, I don't know. So if we're looking for blessings, <coughs> you know, we say we need to thank the Lord for our blessings, sometimes we sit there and see, what, did, what, did I, what blessing did I get? You know, but we got so many that we can't even, we don't even realize that, that they're a blessing. Not everybody has come up around in a family like that. You know, I was at, I, I came from a preacher's family, so that means that you guys grew up in that. So you're you're blessed to have had that background. What I think we're trying to get to here in this second paragraph, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> when we're when we're making our decisions and setting our goals for our life, number one has to be that we include God in our decisions and our goals. If we start going ahead and setting a whole bunch of goals for our days and our lives and short term, long term, and forget to pray about it and ask the Lord about it and don't include Him, we're going to have a different set of goals than if we had been a Christian. And so let's, we have the connection, we all have this connection now, and we realize it's important for us to realize how we got it and that there are people out there that don't have the connection or maybe a partial connection. How can we help lead them to realize the importance of checking with God first before we make a decision and, and setting our goals? Because the natural thing is is that is to humanly okay what do I really like to do you know so I'm going to just put all my eggs in that basket and I'm going to go this way when God might have see this happened to me big time I ended up being a pastor that's where God wanted me to go and I was heading in, in another direction but he started to He's an amazing God, and He can take us down the track and use whatever talents we have for this. And then, and then, He He had to get my attention some way because if you're having a great time in life, you're 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 like, why should I change anything? I'm having a great time, you know. So He started uh, giving me physical needs where the doctors actually didn't matter where you went. They said, I don't know, Mr. Lewis, we just can't find anything wrong with you. But I know you, one doctor, he was a foreign guy, he says, Mr. Lewis, you bet he's sick man. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> I'm still sick. That's why I'm here. I'm trying to find out what's going on. You know what was wrong, don't you, is that I was going in a direction that didn't include God. And it's the strangest thing, you, you know. He said, well, he, he said to me, I will heal you. 
took less than a week to fix it. Mm -hmm. And you know the story. Marjorie, I want to hear what you have to say as well. Um, I was going to say, when we meet people, we have to meet them where they are. And then we have to share what God has done for us. <coughs> and sometimes that's hard when it's maybe somebody you don't know. Yeah. Or even a family member or somebody you do know. It can be difficult for us to speak up, but he will give us the courage to do that. Yeah. Well, he, we, we definitely can't do it. Okay, God, I'll do what you want. Let me see what I can figure out. What did I just say? Let me see what I can figure out. we got to take him with us, and he's got to lead us because we'll goof it all up, but God won't. He'll, he'll give us the word that we have to have faith and trust him that we'll be able to say the necessary things and do the necessary things. Tom, this, this is right on to where I've been feeling about this person that we don't know that I asked Joyce about a little while ago. And they're keeping him sedated. And he knows that, uh, that people know he's going to die. And I'm thinking, we don't have to necessarily go there, but we'd do anything that we could to help this stranger. And I feel that God would have us come together whatever his name is, to pray that he will be touched by the Master's hand. So whether we do it right now, right here, or in the service, but I feel God wants us to, him to show his power. And he can do that. Let's add it to our prayer list. I don't, I, I don't know, but thank you so much. And God knows. Yeah, God knows. But what I'm, what I'm going to say is, I, well, I pray that that happens. Because that would be such, such a witness to our oldest son that was raised in church. I mean, they're best friends. And they stayed best friends all through high school and now. But our son doesn't. Our son doesn't um, go to church or think that he needs to. And he's not a young man. He's he's starting to get older. So as we know, like Pastor said, you could be 16 years old, and that's the end of your life. We, we never see know. it every. We see it every day. You never know. So I'm. I'm thanking you for that prayer and thanking God for giving it to you. And I'm going to join the prayer. So I think specifically uh, on, on that thought about setting goals in our life, I, I don't think that at any age, you know, that we should say, well, you know, I'm kind of winding down here and I don't want to get setting too many goals out in front of me here. <clears throat> so I'm just going to kind of sit around the house and not do anything. I think that we have got to, I think we've got to go full steam ahead with what physically we can handle with God's strength until the, until the day, I was going to say until the day we die. And who, it, was anybody confused by what I said there about that, that uh, believers don't die? No. No. You realize that we, all we do as Christians, yes, our physical body dies, mm -hmm. our soul, we step over into heaven like that with a twinkling of an eye, the Bible says. And so we don't have that ugliness that we don't know where we're going. We know exactly where we're going to be with Jesus. And we can know that. People would say, well, you can't know that. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, one of my prayers has been for years and years and years when I finally told the Lord I wanted Him to have my all. Lord, you open the doors and you close them because you're the only one that can. You know, my mind, like you said, I can set goals and determine to do what I think I should do. But I want the Lord to close that door. I shouldn't be doing it. 
or open the ones that I need? I think right along with what she just said is what we have to do. I don't think waiting for the service should happen. I think it should happen right now, right here. Joyce is a connection to her son that has a friend. And here we are. We are people that are unknown to that family, but not to God. And God can lay this out. We have to pick up and run with it. And I think we need to, together as a group, make it happen in Jesus' name. Well, this group right here is really we're the backbone of the church and uh, we know what's kind of going on in our church and we know the needs that are out there and that's why we pray for our Sunday school class and that's why we we know that uh, we, we've seen God do so many miracles that I, I, I remember one time going as the delegate for our church and, and uh, went to conference and 900 pastors and delegates there and I got the opportunity to come up and tell them why our church was a turnaround church and why was it growing like it was and I thought what what story can I tell them because I know I, I've got a list of a hundred at least miracles that had happened and why this is is a good thing and so you, you just have to start off and, and tell what God has done and how it's changed your life. And that is, that's why it's so important to have, to try to set little goals and, and reach out for them and, and uh, take the Lord with you. Don't get ahead of him. We have a tendency to tell God, hey, here's what we need, instead of asking and, and saying, Lord, just provide what I need and help me. So let's pray as we close this morning. I don't know what time is it. I think we're yeah. I Our think clock we're is that time. Uh, uh, yeah, we ten forty-seven. Okay. Now next week when we come back here, Lord <laughs> willing, that we'll be able to move down here. And we're, we're still on the same three. page. <laughs> but what we decided today is is that that yes we do, it's important to set goals, but the most important thing is is to what? Include God in it. And make Amen. sure that, that we don't miss that, because that would be a big mistake to try to do our own thing. And then next week there's a little bit of discipline that we're going to talk about here. Uh, we need to be organized with some things and not get disorganized and so forth. So, so we're going to we're going to go ahead and close in prayer this morning. I really like this lesson. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good one because like it applies right to today, no matter what age we are. Yeah. I tell you what, one thing for you. For you, to, you know, we're, talking, we're talking about goals here, but also with our goals, uh, we can't let our dreams die. We can set goals, but we don't have a dream to reach them. We get disheartened. We get discouraged, and once your dream dies of reaching that goal, you probably never will. And and I, I know I've, I've heard it said before, don't let your dream die, because when you do, you give up on everything. And so not only, I don't care how many goals you got, if you don't have the encouragement, the dream to reach that goal, you'll never reach it. The dream or vision, God. Yeah, gives. vision. Either way, you know, it's the uh, same thing. You know, you gotta, you gotta, gotta have that desire. You know, no matter what the goal is, long term or short term. Well, thank you, Lord, for our lesson today, and Lord, we can we continue with it, whatever's necessary, where where you lead us. We have. We have prayers this morning, and they're they're all important. But uh, Lord, there's there's one right now that we want to touch on, Lord. That it, it just it, it it's really uh, necessary to ask for a, a miracle of healing this morning. So that's the the prayer that Joyce has. Uh,
for uh, John and Lord, we pray for that need this morning. And, and Lord, in, in some way, Lord, that maybe we don't realize or understand, Lord, we just pray for uh, intervention, Lord, yeah. by you, and that you'd go in and touch the lives that yeah. are being affected by this, and it would, Lord, it would be a great thing if we could see that, Lord, and we know that you know best, so we're going to put it in your hands this morning, the whole thing, and trust with all the faith that we have. Yes. Believing. Everybody around this table believes, Lord, that you can you can do anything. You can and so we bring it to you this morning. Yes. And as we close our, our class this morning, we just want to give you thanks for leading us to spend some time on, on this particular lesson here. There's so much that we can learn uh, from each other and our experiences. And and notice, and, and it will change the way that we relate to other people and our relationship to you. So we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right.